my name is Abby, and today I'm going to talk to you about a few things that I've been able to do here at ASU. Um, before I start to talk to you about those accomplishments, though, I want to tell you a little bit of background on me. So I'm originally from a very small, poor town in Pennsylvania um, where most people never leave. It's really badly stricken with poverty and unemployment and a lot of other issues that you probably already know about if you're from the Appalachian area. Um, I went to a Title I school growing up, and my family couldn't support me financial, financially, so they did emotionally, and um, supported me in what I wanted to do, which was, come he which was to come here and study to be a teacher. So I never really thought that was possible seven years ago when I started um, going to high school because of how bad it is up there. But um, I graduated high school at the top of my class and got enough financial aid to come here. And now I'm about to graduate. Right now I'm student teaching and it's everything that I ever wanted. So I am a first generation college student and I've been able to do my own research here. I've been able to study abroad. Um, I went to Australia this past summer and I'm gonna tell you all about that. So one of the reasons why I'm here to talk to you um, is about the research that I've done. When I was in elementary school, I was identified as a gifted student. So I was moved to higher math and reading classes. Now I identify myself as a teacher, and though I've been identified as gifted all of my life, I've been having to live with mental health illnesses as well. When I transitioned from elementary school to middle school, those started to appear because it's just a genetic thing. Living, in two are living with two areas of need, giftedness and mental health illness, usually means having one of those areas ignored. So since I was identified as gifted first, most teachers weren't able to pay attention to the mental health illnesses that I had. So for me, my mental health illnesses were left untreated until I ended up in the emergency room for ongoing panic disorder. And now, because of my studies in education, I know that this should have happened and could have happened much sooner. Since my freshman year in fall 2014, I have been researching and presenting on twice exceptional students or those who are gifted and have emotional and behavioral disorders. Last fall, I defended my undergraduate honors thesis, effective support for high school and college students who are twice exceptional. This past June, I was also given the once in a lifetime opportunity to present my research at the International Association of Special Education in Perth, Australia. During the conference in Australia, I was, about, I was able to meet so many educators who are passionate in education, just like all of you. It was amazing to see how many different perspectives there are and how much passion there is for education in the world. The theme for the conference was addressing the ex exceptional needs of the whole child and young adult, embracing the future. So my research on twice exceptional students fit right into the theme, and I found many professors and teachers who were excited and impressed with my research. So today, I wanted to discuss with all of you how tying these unique ideas together is important and very possible for all of you when you're studying here at ASU. And also what my <laughs> impact my work has on the community. Through the research and presentation of my thesis, my goal has been to, again, increase the visibility of mental health illnesses, as well as dispel some of the myths and stigma around it. So I do this by being very open about my own experiences, like I'm sharing that with you all today. I am a teacher, I'm a first generation college student, I've been living with mental health illnesses, and I'm not afraid to come up here and tell everyone, and I'll talk to my students about it. I'm teaching seventh grade right now, and they're going through puberty, and it's a crazy time for them, and that's when mental health illnesses start to appear, and it's very important to be open and transparent about that. So, there's very little research in the area that I've been doing research in on twice exceptional students, despite the fact that suicide is the third leading cause of death for youth. 90% of those students have mental health illnesses. They just haven't been able to be treated yet. This is a problem locally, nationally, and globally. That's something that I was able to find out by going to Australia and presenting my research. Specifically in Arizona, Undocumented youth are at risk for mental health illnesses because of the high amount of stress that they face on a daily basis, as well as other things like lack of access of simple things. Learning multiple areas, ideas, and perspectives through my research 
has allowed me to tie together these local and global issues by meeting foreign educators and accessing international studies of special education and mental health needs. These issues are affecting the community here and abroad. And you're gonna learn that through all of your classes and all of the people that you meet here. These issues um, can only be solved if we have pe people who are passionate, like all of you, to actually go out and solve them. And that's one of the things that Paul was saying too, like if you go out there and you find different organizations and people who can solve these problems, then you can work with them and do that too. So if we have people passionate enough to strive towards solutions, we can make an impact on the community and promote change for the better. So good luck and thank you.